Are you tired that your pointy hair in anime hairstyles look like a banana? No problem, we're going to correct that in this video where we're going to show you how to make this as best as you can in this 90s anime hairstyle. This is the complete shader, as you can see it's really easy to pull together and we're also going to be discussing how to create a custom light vector. This is very important because we're going to show you how to do that in the end of the video. So please stick around on, until the end of the video to watch it. Welcome back to a new video. My name is Pierre Schiller and I created this character, Viper Sting, for the story C77, C79 universe, okay? This is a 2020 concept artwork, as you can see right there. So I decided to try Hair Tool Add-on, which is a specialized add-on to create hair, to see how much I could stylize it using it. And I try not to make it too realistic. However, if you would like to go for that kind of look, then I purely recommend using hair tools all right so let's start with the basic modeling i call this part of the process the hemispheres if we can call it that way um, where i define the basic volume that i'm going to be covering later on with layers of polygons if we can call it that way i always try to imagine the hair done in certain layers as you seek for research on how to create stylized hair, you will come to know that you really need to base your work in real life hairstylist styles. So I, sh I recommend you do the search on Pinterest because they have a lot of good references for you to work. Anyways, I decided to create this hairstyle called uh, the wolf hairstyle. For some reason, it's very popular between uh, women older women and it's sure to be a classic anyways i try to create a second layer at the back of the head as you can see at the middle of the head and to the sides this will be the same process than if you were to create it using hair strands so in my case i'm just uh, modeling here i also open the uvs and as you can see i assignated one single uv space for the hair only and right now i'm grouping every strand and the shadow part of the strand goes to one side and the light part of the strand goes to the other side so i hope that makes sense you never want to paint the dark colors in your diffuse color you want to have separate maps one for the lines and one for the shadow maps and also you can use vertex paint to create dark zones that you specifically designed with the polygons in mind, the polygon flow in mind, as you can see. So what you can do right here is to switch over to vertex paint and on the top part, you will now find the attributes part where you can uh, drop down that menu and then type the property name. As were before, we were using the right side property panel but for now in Blender 4.1 we have that a special axis so that we can name the vertex paint property appropriately so we're going to use the node attribute the attribute node and we're going to type the name col call because that's the way it was called before on the previous blender versions so as you can see right here, uh, there is a glitch actually. If I do not have a property, vertex property on the mesh, I will have to assign it and then move the viewport just a little bit so that it will, you know, override or draw the call so that the viewport displays that vertex paint. But anyways, if you're in vertex mode, it's really easy to just switch on all of the other parts with Alt Q to, uh, to select. To, to do your selection, sorry, and then it will automatically assign a vertex paint property, uh, but you can rename it as you see right here. So that's very easy. Why do you want to create an extra layer of dark colors in this case? Because there are some times where you want to outline your mesh and then you have modeled uh, some certain vertices very well aligned and then it's uh, an advantage to do vertex paint. Okay, next we're going to move into shadows. This was an issue that it was really problematic 
back on uh, Blender 3.6 and beyond uh, because we had transparent shadows casted over some NPR shading and those were very good. But something happened after Blender 3.6 and it was very glitchy as you can see right here. You cannot get right away a really clean shadow. So what do we do? We go to the light properties into the shadows and what we're going to do here is to change first of all the bias and then we're going to change the distance of that cascade shadow. And as you can see, it fixes the problem immediately. So this is a very important tip I want you to consider. Next, if you activate or deactivate the shadows, you're going to notice that the extra strands that we have are also casting shadows from the light. And it's it's very difficult to, to see them correctly. Next, I want you to pay attention on what I'm doing here because I'm selecting the edges I want them sharp, which I want sharp, sorry. And then going into edit mode, press N and, and increase the crease value, as you can see right here. So no more bananas, pointy hairs. We can finally have really spiked hair as we wish, but with the advantage that everything else can be smoothened out using the smooth modifier, the, I'm sorry, the subdivision modifier. So let's talk about creating a custom light vector. This is important. We're going to create an empty object. Then we're going to shift D, press Z so that you can uh, translate it on the Z, Z angle upwards. And we're going to name this to uh, light vector A and light vector B. Just use a name that is representative enough for the two points, okay? So next, we're going to create just a single vertice, vertex, and then we're going to extrude it upwards. Select the top point and then add a vertex group top. Select the bottom point and then add a bottom uh, vertex group and assign it as well. From there, we want to create a transformation constraint for the upper null and point to the up part of that uh, single vertex that we extruded. The same thing we're going to do with the lower part. Again, constrain it with a constraint transform and target that vertex group for the bottom, just like this, from the uh, extruded vertex uh, object. Okay, so now you should have all of this. Next, we're going to create a bone, okay? This is very important, create a bone, go to edit mode and move this around the top part so that the top and the bottom match the distance. So when we enter post mode and when we rotate it, what we want is to remove those empties. So select the vertex that we extruded and control P to the bone. Select bone to parent it. Now we can move it. And as you can see, the empties should be moving, at least the top one. That's what we want. We want to always have the reference for that. Go into object mode and try to rotate it as well to see if it works and it's still working. Next, we're going to select the hair because now we're going to send that, in, that vector information to the shader. So in this case, I'm selecting the hair shader and then we're going to create a texture coordinate pointing to the first object A and then duplicate that and, and point to the second empty object, which is B. Then use a math vector subtract. Okay, sorry, not math vector, uh, vector, uh, yeah, vector math it is. And then connect it to a normalize. Now this is important because here we define the distances between the vectors, the single distance between the vectors. And then we're going to create a dot product pointing to the geometry normal. Okay, so this is important to intersect the normals for the object against the light vectors that we're creating. Next, we're going to add a color ramp, and this part is very easy because now we can finally define as a factor affecting a mix node with two different colors. Okay, so that's it. Now you go into post mode, and after that, if you rotate it, you're going to notice that your hair um, uh, light is going to change. The light direction of the hair is going to change. And this is exactly what we want. We want to separate the light, the original scene lights from this exclusive vector light direction 
which we are now going to control using this bone. By the way, let's uh, change this so that we can see this more easily. I'm going to use a box at the bottom and a circle at the top. Okay, with those things, um, I guess it's easy for everyone to identify where it's going to be the top and the bottom. All right, so I'll go back to post mode and I can notice that the vectors are kind of uh, reversed, but then you can go back into the shader node as I am doing here. You can either move the rated ramp, great, sorry, <laughs> the ramp shader, or you can switch around the, the order of the objects. Next, we're going to keep smoothing the shadows. Okay, I see a lot of comments on my videos where they tell me the shadows are pretty horrible, like in this case. This is what the light in the scene is producing. It's producing a very bad casting shadows. But if we remove them, then it is going to get worse because we need the shadows for different types of things. Um, but one little trick that I have to smoothen out uh, besides using the subsurface modifier, uh, I'm sorry, the subdivision modifier, it's to copy the normals. So I'm going to activate this uh, modifier, which is the editing normal modifier. And then I'm going to copy the normals from the sphere. Um, what we want, what we don't want is to have those uh, very teeth dented shadows. What we really want, it's curvy and soft shadows like we're seeing here. Okay, so this is what you need to have in order for your hair to look this good. You need to have separate maps for the line art, just exclusively for the line art. Please always remember that whenever you're doing this, you're trying to imagine how much work the animator in an anime series will have. So try to simplify it as much as possible. And here you can have an overview of the shader tree. Of course, supporting patrons are going to get this entire full model. So maybe if you're considering joining, please check out the video URL in the video description. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you really like this video or if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Pierre Schiller and I hope to see you in the next video.